Right, so with the release of the, let's face it, ball bag looking Geo Storm this week, it's time for Gerard Butler to once again roll the dice on his acting career. If the film is all sorts of silly, which it totally should be, then it could be a great role for the comedy portion of his resume. If it's not, and is played dead serious as the trailer might suggest, then this could be a delightful train wreck. Now, Butler has had a tendency to show up in the most questionable places in the past, from misjudged horror movies to lukewarm rom-coms. Yet at the same time, he's had a number of occasionally surprising successes. It's basically left him looking like an exploded Tesco employee as he's all over the f***ing shop when it comes to how he's being perceived by the public. Which actually makes this list quite easy to make. Lucky me. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com, and this is Gerard Butler. Five awesome performances, and five that sucked. Number five on the awesome side, Creedy, Reign of Fire. In this film of dudes versus dragons, Butler plays Creedy, the loyal best mate of Christian Bale's main character, Quinn. The two lead a small outpost of survivors in a Great Britain ravaged by more fire-breathing tyrants than Theresa May. In one touching scene, they end up recreating Star Wars because, well, just because. And if you've ever wanted to see Jared Butler play Luke Skywalker, here's your chance. The friendship between Butler and Bale in the film is authentic and believable, giving heft to the former's early demise. Plus, he goes out as a big piece of southern fried chicken, which is always fun. Number five that sucked, Dracula, Dracula 2000. Although Wes Craven orchestrated it, Dracula 2000 was ultimately a bit of a hot mess. It was all special effects, mumbo-jumbo, and meaningless plot twist after meaningless plot twist, with a cast of characters who were just waiting to be dead bodies. Even though it had a kind of cool original take on the Dracula myth, in that the Count was actually revealed to be Judas, condemned to eternal life by God for portraying Jesus Christ, the whole concept is squandered by a poor script, poor direction, and a distinctly average performance by a young Jared Butler. Trying his best to be brilliant, Rudy and sexy just comes off as a bit of a hair gel douchebag who can also turn into a bat and stuff. Number foursome, King Leonidas, 300. Jared Butler's breakthrough role, as we all know, was as King Leonidas in Zack Snyder's blood and green screen historical epic slash comic book adaptation, 300. Looking like he'd stepped right off the page, Butler got ripped and sported the finest beard since my own ever to jut out of an actor's face. Whilst his action credentials were definitely sealed in this role, even more memorable was his skill as an orator. Leonidas delivers several outstanding speeches in the film, gifting the zeitgeist with many a one-liner that still finds themselves in common usage today. Everyone remembers where they were when they first heard, THIS IS SPARTA! It was, it was probably the cinema, actually. But, but you get my meaning. Number four that sucked, Mike, The Ugly Truth. If there's one thing that Jared Butler can't do, it's an American accent, and if there's one thing he shouldn't do, it's rom-coms. Obviously, on some kind of romantic comedy high after the well-received, if terribly sappy, P.S. I Love You, Butler did what most leading men in Hollywood do and just kind of chased that image for a bit. The Ugly Truth has a plot so tedious, it was almost painful. Now, to his credit, Butler looks like he's having fun, but the movie is so dreadful that neither he nor his dreadful Yank accent can rise above the proceedings. Coupled with the fact that he followed this up with The Bounty Hunter with Jennifer Aniston, ugh, and you've got a one-two punch that, whilst financially successful, nearly took his critical reputation to the grave. Number three on the awesome side, one, two, rock and roller. I really, really didn't rate rock and roller too highly, but you know what? My opinions, much like my desire for your mother's, are questionable at best. That being said, one, two, played by Butler and his gang, the Wild Bunch, are a riotous lot and very fun to watch when they're bouncing off one another. One, two's initial reaction to finding out that handsome Bob, played by Tom Hardy, is gay, leads to some great laughs as he gives Bob a fitting send off before he goes to prison. What everyone else assumes to be a sexual action turns out to be a slow dance at a bar. It's hilarious. Rock and Roller exists as a testament to Butler's comedic ability, taking the piss out of his hard nut image. It's an entertaining performance in an above average film. Number three that sucked, Set, Gods of Egypt. 2016 was a pretty terrible year for everyone, and Jared Butler was no exception. Not only did he star in London Has Fallen, the sequel to Olympus Had Fallen that no one had asked for, and even fewer people enjoyed, he made this fantasy action, air quotes, epic. Ten years on from 300, he went from being the king of Sparta to the god of the desert, Set, and his performance was every bit as dry as the Sahara itself. The movie is an absolute mess in just about every possible way, from the wonky effects to the nonsensical plot, and Butler is right there in the middle as a terrible bad guy. We've established that he can't do an American accent, but here he plays an Egyptian god with his own Scottish accent, and that's even weirder. 
He shouts, he frowns, he hams it up, but in the end, it was only critical backlash that was set in stone. Puns, I've got them. Number 2. Sam, Machine Gun Preacher This is another so-so film which was pretty much rescued by a very good performance by Gerard Butler. Based on a true story, the film follows a criminal biker turned born-again Christian who travels to the Sudan to help build an orphanage. It's a film that lacks focus but finds a strong central performance from Butler. The film relies on Butler to believably bring us to Sam's breaking point, where he resorts to violence to defend the kids in his care, and the actor ably succeeds in doing so. As it turns out, his best talents seem to be bringing earthy authenticity to the role. Number 2. Cable Gamer the film itself might not be the worst thing ever, but it was still by no means anything other than average. In a future where gamers can play as real-life death row inmates in a shoot 'em up arena, Gerard Butler plays Cable, a popular air quotes character in the game. Almost as expected from a main character who's controlled by other characters, Cable makes for a fairly bland protagonist. And the material does nothing to bring out Butler's strengths as an actor. Action sequences that should be enjoyable are dulled by Butler's lifeless energy. It's like he just couldn't be bothered to put anything into Gamer. And therefore, why should we? A poor showing from Butler and a worse career decision. And number one, Tullus Orphidius, Coriolanus. Not enough people saw this film, and it's a damn shame. Ray Fiennes boasted not only an assured hand behind the camera, but more than that, he brought Shakespeare kicking and screaming into the 21st century. The narrative is based on a true tale of a returning Roman general who, successful on the battlefield, runs for office and is elected. His unpopularity, though, sees him exiled, where he allies with his former enemy Tullus, played by Gerard Butler. Butler is on absolute form here, giving a searing intensity to each and every one of his dramatic line readings, thoroughly selling his frenemy status, and firmly silencing any naysayers who would have thought that he was unable to pull off Shakespearean dialogue. And number one, Leprechaun, movie 43. Yeah, so Jared Butler totally played a foul-mouthed leprechaun, well, two actually, who get into a Barney with Sean William Scott and Johnny Knoxville. Peter Farrelly's ill-advised sketch movie produced a lot of dire offerings from a surprising amount of A-listers. But Butler's racist leprechaun act was definitely nearer the top of the sheep. Although, to be fair, nothing can top Hugh Jackman's testicle neck. Ugh. When will filmmakers learn that constantly talking about their balls doesn't equate to comedy gold? Nor does taking things so far as to have a leprechaun say that he's going to climb inside one of your mother's vaginas and light a campfire. That's my shtick, and I'm a YouTube drain dweller, so it f***ing works for me. Not a million pound per page actor. It's not funny, and it certainly is his worst role. And that's our list. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. As always, like, share and subscribe and head back to whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. And as always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, but wait, there is a reason why I'm doing this in a live action setting. It's because you might have noticed this little button up here. Yeah, it's just like floating about. Now that actually is a poll. You can click on it and let us know what you want to see next on Awesome and Sucked that isn't me. Just let us know in the comments below or on that, and I'll see you soon. It's easy. Bye. Where's the floor going? Oh, bloody hell. This is the end card, end slate. The end of the video. Uh, there's some videos to click here, channels there. Some really, some really smart people down below, smart cookies. They can edit videos and write articles on whatculture.com. You should subscribe and everything. And Phil, you've done a really, you've done a good job of this. It's not, it's not easily done, but you fit everything in. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. Filled it in.